welcome to the African news update on top accolade news. The headlines. Makisau rejects audit findings on Senegal's debt. EU commits 1.1 billion euros to boost African continental free trade area and economic integration. Saudi Arabia strengthens economic ties with Africa. South African workers demand minimum wage increase. In politics, Makisau rejects audit findings on Senegal's debt. Former Senegalese President Makisau has vehemently rejected an audit revealing that his administration understated government debt, which has contributed to a downgrade of the nation's credit rating by Moody's. The audit led by Prime Minister Usman Sonko indicated that the debt-to-GDP ratio averaged 76.3% during Saul's tenure, significantly higher than previously reported figures. In his first public response, Saul defended his economic policies, arguing that borrowing for development is essential and asserting that the investments made under his administrations are evident. As Senegal prepares for parliamentary elections on November 17th, Sal is making a political comeback by leading the opposition coalition aiming to curb the new government's influence amidst ongoing economic challenges. In economy, EU commits 1.1 billion euros to boost African continental free trade area and economic integration. The European Union has announced a significant pledge of 1.1 billion euros to support the African continental free trade area AFCFTA, as part of its Team Europe initiative. This commitment revealed during a meeting in Addis Ababa aimed to enhance economic integration across the continent. Despite their ambitious goals, which seek to eliminate tariffs on intra-African trade, participation remained limited, with fewer than 10 countries freely engaged. The Team Europe initiative encompasses 70 projects across sectors like trade, digital commerce and investments, fostering greater cooperation between the EU and Africa. Still in economy, Saudi Arabia strengthened economic ties with Africa. Saudi Arabia's Minister of Commerce confirmed that the Saudi delegation's visit to South Africa aligns with the Kingdom's commitment to enhancing economic relations with Africa. Announced at the Saudi Africa Summit last November, these initiatives include over $1 billion in development projects and $25 billion in investment across vital sectors. The Saudi South African Business Forum, held in Johannesburg with 420 leaders from both nations, highlighted the potentials to increase the current trade volume, which reached $3.5 billion in 2023. Key discussions included reforms to enhance Saudi competitiveness, cooperation in mining, and expanding tourism partnerships. The forum concluded in the signing of two agreements between the Saudi Export Import Bank and local banks, marking a pivotal step in deepening economic collaboration. Now in labor, South African workers demand minimum wage increase. In South Africa, workers are demanding a significant increase in the minimum wage, citing the rising cost of living. Currently set at 27 rands and 50 cents per hour, or 5,050 rands per month, this wage has not seen change since 2019. Workers are calling for tripling of the minimum wage to 15,000 rands per month as inflation continues to erode their purchasing power. However, some unions such as the General Industries Workers Union of South Africa argue that this demand is unrealistic given the country's economic conditions. Economists have warned that increasing the minimum wage could lead to higher unemployment rates, currently sitting at a staggering 41%. The debate over the minimum wage reflects broader concerns about economic inequality and living standards of South Africans. You are watching the African News Update on Top Accolade News. Do stay with us. Still to come. In agriculture, as a Beijing implement import restriction 
on cattle from Algeria. As a Beijing has announced new restrictions on the import of live cattle from certain regions in Algeria due to alarming disease outbreaks. The Food Safety Agency of Azerbaijan, or ASFA, has implemented these measures following reports of nodular dermatitis in various provinces in Algeria. Under the new rules, all live cattle, small ruminants, and related genetic materials will be banned from farms within designated proximity to the outbreaks. These precautions aim to save Azerbaijan's livestock from potential disease incursions. The AFSA is coordinating with the State Custom Committee to ensure strict monitoring of imports from affected areas in line with the World Organization of Animal Health Guidelines. In health, UK government contributes £1 million to support Uganda's response to MPOX outbreak. Uganda is set to receive £1 million boost from the UK government to enhance its response to a growing MPOX outbreak, which has now reached 80 confirmed cases. The funding will support initiatives led by Baylor College of Medicine and its Infectious Disease Institute, focusing on improved coordination, surveillance and community engagement. Acting British High Commissioner Philip Smith emphasized the urgency of collaboration, stating that this immediate funding is crucial to counter the outbreak. Meanwhile, the Uganda Ministry of Health reported 11 new cases, urging compassion towards those affected. In entertainment, South African activists petition against Chris Brown's December concert. South African women's rights activists, led by group Women for Change, have launched a petition to prevent controversial U.S. singer Chris Brown from performing in December. This petition calls on the government and concert promoters to reconsider his scheduled performances, arguing that they are a slur to millions affected by gender-based violence, particularly as the concert falls shortly after the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence campaign. Activists are also urging the Department of Home Affairs to revoke Brown's visa. Despite the backlash, tickets of this concert sold within hours, prompting the addition of a second date, and the petition has already gathered over 26,000 signatures in opposition. In sports, Burkina Faso and Cameroon secure spots for 2025 African Cup of Nations. Burkina Faso and Cameroon have clinched their spots for the 2025 African Cup of Nations with two qualifying rounds remaining. Burkina Faso became the first team to qualify after a decisive 2-0 victory over Burundi, ensuring a top two finish in Group L with 10 points. Meanwhile, Cameroon sealed their qualification with 1-0 win against Kenya. Both Burundi and Kenya played their matches in neutral venues due to inadequate stadiums. Other teams, including Algeria and Egypt, are also in contention to qualify as the qualifiers approach their conclusion. The tournament is set to kick off on December 21st, 2025, in Morocco. That concludes our African news updates for today. Stay tuned for more African news and developments. Thanks for joining us. I am Okocha Ojarumi. Connect and engage with us on all our social media handles. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you.